Sean Payton is absolutely in love, and he doesn't care who knows it. Uh, move over, Travis and Taylor, because the NFL is about to have a new love story. Uh, Sean Payton is desperately hoping that this player falls to number 12 and is still available to be drafted. And if he is there, mark my words, Sean Payton will swipe left or right or whatever direction you swipe when you like a person. Uh, in this video, we're going to break down who Sean Payton apparently is enamored with in this NFL draft, uh, and I'll talk to you about what his coaches have said about him, and, and we'll look at some of his, of his stats. And most importantly, can't wait to hear what you all think in the comments. If you like Broncos content, if you hate Patrick Mahomes, it helps me out if you would like and subscribe. My name is Ben, and this is Sports Talk Denver. Let's dive in. So, According to multiple connected sources, people who like Sean Payton, Sean Payton is in love with number nine, the national champion, J.J. McCarthy, the uh, six foot three, 209 pound junior out of the University of Michigan, uh, who was 27 and one as a starter with the University of Michigan and uh, who I remember my brother-in-laws are massive U of M fans. So I watch a ton of games with them and I remember during his redshirt season when he came in as kind of like a wildcat change of pace quarterback, like thinking, oh my goodness, if the Broncos could get him, I'd be head over heels. I remember thinking he'd be the number one pick in the draft. Uh, yet there are a lot of rumors that he might even fall to the end of the first round. So in this video, we're going to break down what um, the sources say Sean Payton thinks of him. We're going to break down what his coaches have said about him and a lot more. But according to some plugged in sources, Sean Payton doesn't just like kind of like J.J. McCarthy, but uh, the this guy here, Paul Allen, who's a radio host in Minnesota who has a connection to Sean Payton, uh, a reliable individual, says that uh, Sean Payton sees flashes of Drew Brees. Obviously, we know that J.J. McCarthy at six foot three is taller than Drew Brees. He's a lot faster than Drew Brees. He's also a lot less built than Drew Brees. Uh, one of the big concerns when I watched JJ, even in that national championship game and throughout the year this year, he was getting dinged up at six foot three, 209. You're kind of a svelte guy and you're going against Khalil Mack. You're going against, uh, you know, just some beasts, uh, the condor in, in the Raiders and it, with the Las Vegas Raiders. You're, you're just going against some, some big dudes. And that's, that hits different than playing against college talent. Uh, but according to this K fan source, uh, Sean Payton is in love. He's enamored with him. And if the Broncos see him on the board at 12, according to him, they will make a, a big move and draft JJ McCarthy to be the next starting quarterback for the Denver Broncos. So last video, I talked about a rumor, uh, according to PFF that the Broncos were going to trade up to the second spot. And to do so, we're going to have to not only give up this year's first, but two more firsts and then a second. And a lot of us are looking at that like, hey, can we really afford at this point to give up all those draft picks when we need to surround this quarterback with some future talent? We know we're kind of in uh, cap purgatory now. And so this seems to be like an awesome situation. If J.J. McCarthy could be the type of coach that or the type of player that his coaches say he is, uh, that would be amazing if he was still on the board at 12 and we didn't have to give up anything to get him. Uh, I think all of us in Broncos country would be blown away and excited to have him if if he is who who people say he is. So looking at uh, what do people say he is? So I'm looking here uh, at the scouting report of him from Bleacher Report, which is saying his biggest strength is right here, above accuracy when throwing in the middle, such as slant routes and digs. And if you think of what was Sean Payton most frustrated about with Russell Wilson this year, what was Jerry Judy most frustrated about with Jerry uh, with Russell Wilson this year? It was the fact that Sean Payton devises these multi-receiver schemes where a guy gets open in the middle and Russell Wilson just didn't see him and didn't throw in the middle. In fact, he was uh, the second to last ranked quarterback in the NFL for throwing over the middle. So the fact that that is where his strengths lie, that's a really, really good sign, right? Obviously, uh, looking at, at the downside or, or what is the worry about him, but he is a felt guy at only 205 pounds. Um, Again, another downside on him is that those deep balls, I felt like a lot of times this year you had receivers kind of waiting for him and they looked more like punts and he wasn't hitting guys deep in stride uh, as we look at Caleb Williams being able to huck the ball 60 yards off of one foot, kind of have that Mahomes rocket arm. But I think the fact that um, 
that wasn't really Drew Brees' forte either, right? Drew Brees was a in-time passer who was able to make reads over the middle and play well with tight ends, and that's the type of system that Sean Payton wants to to kind of draw up. Um, so looking at, at some of this stuff here, that that's just pretty insane to see, is that Jim Harbaugh, leading up to the national championship game, absolutely gushed about J.J., but what's more telling is that even when he was long gone from Michigan and there was no reason to suck up, there's no reason to um, tout and hype up your former quarterback because if JJ ends up going on to be a flop, that actually lowers what people think about like your football IQ. So the fact that leading up to the game and then much after the game, you have Harbaugh saying that he's the greatest quarterback ever to play for the university of Michigan. And need I remind you that, He was drafted as a first-round quarterback from the University of Michigan. And, of course, Tom Brady was also a quarterback from the University of Michigan. And so that is just um, a very, very high praise from a guy who was a a top candidate to coach in the NFL for us last year and now got signed on to be with the L.A. Chargers. Uh, So looking here, he's got a long way to go, but as as a college, in college, he was the best ever. Now, I think the devil's advocate side of me would say, The other best ever college quarterback, Uh, his book is right on my shelf right there, and that's Sir Timothy Tebow, and he was a great college quarterback, but that didn't translate to NFL success. But I I do think there's a much smaller barrier between college and the pros now, and I think another huge difference is that Jim Harbaugh was running a pro-style offense with the University of Michigan, where the University of Florida was not always doing that. And you had Tim Tebow kind of as a wildcat quarterback and doing jump passes and things you don't often see in the NFL. Although I think Tim Tebow would be a lot more successful in today's NFL than he was uh, when he came out. Uh, You know, I should maybe do a video on that and just looking at some of the play design that we have now. And uh, imagine Tim Tebow playing like with the Philadelphia Eagles offense and, and doing that brotherly shove. Like he, he could absolutely do that. But, uh, Looking here, a couple other things uh, that have just been fascinating. Why did this, my, uh, my, this always pops up, but I, I don't have viruses on my computer. So one of the things is uh, Joel Klatt, who called more Big Ten games than anyone else. Joel Klatt and Gus Johnson are absolutely the best commentators, I think, in sports. Anytime Gus Johnson is on a call, I'm tuned in and love it because he just brings those vibes that are amazing. But Joel Klatt, Colorado Connections. Uh, he, he went to the University of Colorado. His brother was the coach of the year in his in St. Vrain school district at Mead High School. Uh, shout out him. He's an amazing, amazing coach. Um, and, you know, looking here at what Joel Klatt, who evaluates talent very well, thinks that McCarthy's ceiling is very high, and I trust his opinion on it. So one of the things he breaks down is Michigan had garbage schedule really it wasn't until that Ohio State game at the very end of the season that you even had Michigan in a close game there were a ton of games where J.J. McCarthy was out by the fourth quarter and when they were up so big that there was no reason for him to throw and so I think it speaks a lot to him as a player that he came back uh, when he probably could have been a first round draft pick last year and he came back and he he fit that system where he said like hey really it's only going to be two or three games that matter and I'll I'll play hard the first couple quarters, and I'll get subbed out. And uh, looking here, one of the things Joel Klatt points out is that Michael Penix got to throw the ball like 15 to 20 times a game where he got to show his arm, he got to show off. Um, He also had a lot of really high-end receiver talent, which J.J. didn't. J.J. had some great um, receivers or great tight ends, especially Loveland. um, which we love as Denver fans, right, because there's a couple of Lovelands there here, here in Colorado. But one of the things that Joel Klatt points out is that J.J. McCarthy probably only threw the ball in like meaningful throws where he would drop back and pass three to five times a game. And when he did, he was an absolute gamer. I think about those crucial drives against Alabama, against Nick Saban, who draws up a pro-style defense, who's going to have pros drafted to the NFL this year from that defense, that J.J. McCarthy went down and got the game-winning score by throwing the ball a lot. I think that speaks absolute volumes. And then again, in the national championship game, when you couldn't have higher stakes than you have, J.J. McCarthy got it done. Again, another defense that had a, a ton of talent around him. So I, th- I think Jim Harbaugh saying it best, he's the best quarterback in the history of Michigan, 
And uh, looking here, there's actually rumors. Uh, this um, Jim Harbaugh went on with Rich Eisen and said, don't be surprised if he's the first quarterback off of the board, that he has the it factor, 27-1. and one. There are actually some kind of plugged in folks who think that it's very possible that the Chargers try to get a haul for Herbert. Uh, we know that one of the ways of winning in the NFL fastest is not having to have a quarterback on one of those max deals because it kind of kneecaps what you can do with everything else. That's one of the problems we have with Russell Wilson is that we have to pay him so much that we don't surround him with the talent that would make him successful. And so there are rumors that could the LA Chargers get a haul for Justin Herbert and then have J.J. McCarthy go and play for the Chargers. That could be pretty crazy, crazy to see. Um, looking here, this was a, a really interesting article, and this was after just the first three games, but you have a few uh, scouts for the Big Ten Network, a few NFL scouts who think that J.J. McCarthy is a once-in-a-generation talent uh, coming in here saying what he does in the pocket, his severe damage when he does leave the pocket, huge chunk plays, uh, and then looking here at um, he has the arm talent and predisposition to let it rip down the field. So I, I think that would be extremely, extremely exciting for Broncos country if we felt like after April 20th, dude, we got a gen once-in-a-generation quarterback. We didn't have to trade Pat Sertan. We got first-round picks in the next couple of years so that we can keep building talent around him. I think in a dream scenario, we've traded Russ after that June 1st deadline that I talked about last year so that we're not even in the cap purgatory we thought we would be in. And could we go out and get, you know, uh, could we get Lavishka Chenault? Could we restructure um, Cortland Sutton's deal? Could we restructure Jerry Judy's deal? Could we have Tim Patrick back? Could Marvin Mims take a big step into the future? I'm very, very high on the future of this Broncos team, and I hope that you ride with me all the way to the Denver Broncos making the playoffs with J.J. McCarthy. Let's giddy up.